welcome everybody. You just entered into the winning zone. Winning zone. Winning zone. Today, I will be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I am ready to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. You just entered into the winning zone. Winning zone. Winning zone.
glory, glory to your name. Every praise is to our God. Hallelujah.
It'll never give up. It'll never run out on me. Your love will never fail. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. It's your love.
Hi. Hello and welcome. We're so excited to have you here at Summit Church. If you're here for the first time, thank you for joining us. And if you're returning, thanks again for coming back. Stay tuned for a powerful message and we know that you'll be blessed by the Word of God. I'll see you in a little bit. Are y'all you, you ready? Okay, I'm ready too. So, all right. We've learned that we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. I'm going to talk about, I talked about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the New Covenant. We're going to begin today talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then we'll talk about the ministries of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he does a lot. And we need to acknowledge his presence. We need to acknowledge him in our lives. And so we learn the, the most important thing that you can learn about the Holy Spirit, in my opinion, is that he is with you how long? All the time, right? Because the Bible says he will be with you forever. Thank you, Jesus. He will never leave you or forsake you. So, and because of that, according to Hebrews, we can boldly say, I don't know how long I can stay in this chair, <laughs> but this chair helps me teach. We can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. See, that, that is a result of him being with you all the time, forever. You can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. See, because he said, I will send. He was a helper, but he could only be in one place at one time. But now through the believers all over the world, the Holy Spirit is Jesus unlimited. And he said, it is to your advantage that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the comforter won't come. But if I go away, I'm going to send him, not it, him to you. Amen. So we have a helper. So when we understand that the Holy Spirit is with us forever, we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. He's my helper. See, that makes it personal. Say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. Say, I will not fear. Say, what? Can man do to me? <laughs> Nothing. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit wouldn't do anything that Jesus wouldn't do. God says, um, or Jesus said, I and my Father are one. The Holy Spirit is one with Jesus and the Father. And Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So Jesus only did good. He said, I only do, I only do what I see the Father do and the Father only does good. James says every good and perfect gift, every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. It is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Jesus only does good. So what do you think the Holy Spirit's going to do? Is he going to do bad stuff to you? No, he only does good. That's good stuff. So what harm can come to you? Walk on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. You know where the devil is? He's in defeat. You have authority over all the works of the devil. Somebody cross your legs and say, I'm in charge. You're in charge, man. So be bold. See, the righteous are bold as a lion. A lion ain't fearing nobody. The righteous are bold as a lion. I like that, don't you? Makes me think about when that Christian came on that line. You ever heard that story? The Christian came up on the line, and he said, he got out on his knees, 
And he said, Lord, I pray that this is a Christian line. <laughs> that lion got down on his knees. He said, Lord, thank you for this food. <laughs> Be careful what you pray for. He got him a Christian lion. <laughs> now, which brings me to something else. <laughs> Amen. God is good. Um, what did that bring me to? <laughs> the righteous are bold as a lion. Amen. And uh, so, yeah, your prayers. That's, 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 uh, thank you, Lord. I have the mind of Christ. <laughs> so, <clears throat> when you're praying, don't pray. We, we looked at Psalm 51 and uh, how David prayed when he was sinning with Bathsheba. And uh, he was, uh, the prophet came to him, I believe it was Nathan, told him a story and he came under conviction. And he prayed, he said, Lord, Bathsheba was another man's wife. David did a terrible thing. See, the Bible isn't all about perfect people. A lot of the Bible was written by murderers. Don't you, under, you understand that? Moses killed an Egyptian. Okay. David, he, he killed Bathsheba's husband so he could have her. And yet, See, God doesn't look at you in your faults according to what you've done. He doesn't re even remember your sins. He doesn't remember what you do. Thank you, Jesus. He called David a man after his own heart. Paul killed Christians, persecuted and killed Christians. And yet, he wrote more than half of the New Testament. Thank you, Lord. Which brings me to something else. I got a lot of things rolling around in my mind. Remind me to get back to prayer. Let's put a pen, pen there, just praying different. People talk about the light and how light will, man, light's going to expose the darkness. And we, okay, you better be careful because, man, the, the, the light's going to, going to shine on your darkness and expose that all the wicked and evil stuff you're doing. But uh, it brings us to, I mean, we're still talking about the Holy Spirit because he does just like Jesus. He's not, he's not convicting you of sins. We covered that thoroughly. Y'all got that? What does he convict you of? He convicts you of your righteousness. So when you hear these voices telling you you've done wrong, you missed it, you, you haven't done this right, you haven't done that right, you've done this wrong, you've done that wrong, you know that that is not the voice of the Holy Spirit. That is any condemning voice. See, this is very important because there are, are a lot of people walking around with guilt and condemnation, and see, those voices you hear, those condemning voices are not from God. They're from the evil one. All right? He's trying to get you off of your position of righteousness. But when you hear encouraging words like, you are still the righteousness of God in Christ. That's the Holy Spirit. He's there to assure you that you remain, that you are still the righteousness of God in Christ. Most of the time, people stop reading when it comes to the woman caught in, uh, in adultery and Jesus told her to, um, he said, I don't condemn you, go and sin no more. And the 12th verse, even in, in one of my Bibles, it separates verse 11 and, and as though Jesus is talking about another subject, I am the light of the world. In verse 12, it says, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But I don't believe that Jesus is going... To, or, or the Holy Spirit is going to another subject. 
I believe he's talking about the same thing. Right after he restores this woman who was caught in adultery. Actually, before Jesus said, I, I used to read that, and I never really saw where he said, neither do I condemn you. I would always jump to over there where he said, sin no more. But actually, what gave her empowerment to sin no more <clears throat> was the fact that he said, neither do I condemn you. He gave her the gift of no condemnation, which gave her the power to go and sin no more. And then he said, after she went on her way, he said, I am the light of the world. He's still talking about the same thing. The light wasn't, what did, what did the light do in that instance? It did not expose her sin. The light, <clears throat> amen, the, 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 the light gave her the ability to sin no more. The light brought restoration. The light brought empowerment. Thank you, Lord. Now, she has the power to sin no more because I don't condemn you. Don't receive the, the, the condemning voices that you hear. Now, what did I tell you all remind, remind me about? Prayer, right? All right. So back to David, he's under conviction about sinning with uh, Bathsheba, and he, he says, Lord, create in me a, a clean heart, renew a steadfast spirit within me. Don't cast me away from your presence, and do not take your spirit from me. Well, there's a lot of problems with that prayer. Not for David. That was, that was right for David to pray that. But I want you to know that David's prayer is our reality. Hey, some of y'all missed that right there. Y'all just missed that little nugget right there. David's prayer is not a prayer for us to pray today. It's our reality. He said, create in me a clean heart. We have a clean heart. So under the new covenant, see, we, see prayer changes in the new covenant. David didn't have the Holy Spirit living in him. He didn't have a clean heart. But you know you have a clean heart because the Holy Spirit lives in you. The Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will not dwell in an unclean place. But the blood of Jesus made you clean. The blood of bulls and goats in the old covenant could only cover sins. Our sins have been put away. I thought about this the other day. I don't know if it'll hit you like it hit me, but I got some revelation. You know, you can, you can read things that have revelation, but didn't get deeper revelation of it. If you go in the Old Testament, I thank you, Lord, that, that the, the things in the Old Testament were, were written for our admonition and for our learning. So I just thought about this, man. All the detail that goes into the setting up of the tabernacle, everything had to be done exactly right for their sins to be covered for a year. The high priest could only go. You just, anybody couldn't fall into the whole, uh, fall up into the Holy of Holies. It had to be the high priest once a year. They had the candlestick, the table, the showbread, all this different furniture. There's one piece of furniture that was not in the tabernacle, and that was a chair. Because the priest's work was never done. There was content, there were, there were daily sin offerings, and there were the, 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 the day of atonement, um, once a year where the high priest would go into the, the Holy of Holies. When you look into all that, and, and everything had to be done exactly right. In fact, the high priest, when he went into the Holy of Holies, into the most holy place to, uh, uh, with the blood of animals to offer sacrifice for the sins of the people, they would tie some kind of rope or something around his ankle so that, and they, they would have bells on the end of his robe so if, them bells, if he did something wrong and didn't do everything exactly right, uh, and he, he would fall over and die if he didn't do everything exactly right. And then the bell stopped ringing. They said, okay, he must have dropped dead. And then they, they couldn't even go in and get him. They couldn't say, hey, hey uh, Johnny, go over there and get him. Mm -mm. They couldn't get him. They had to pull him, had to drag him out because nobody could go in there unless you're authorized. 
Man, this gives me chills. I just caught another glimpse of something. Uh, amen. Under the new covenant, we're authorized. See, because the thing, because what happened in the new covenant, there, see, when Jesus offered one sacrifice for sins forever, he sat down and said, I'm in charge. The whole, see, when he died on the cross and said, it is finished, that whole Old Testament sacrificial system was finished. The Bible says the, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The whole, all that tabernacle system and the blood of, of animals to offer sacrifice for sins was over. It was done, finished. Told you it was going to be different today. <laughs> Amen. And so today, there is no more offering for sins. Watch this. And uh, you can just forget about your notes. Uh, for the law having a shadow, Hebrews 10.1, for the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those same sacrifices which they offer continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then, because if it could have made them perfect, would they not have ceased to be offered? The only thing that will stop the sacrificial system in the Old Covenant was a sacrifice to make the offerers perfect. If there was not such a sacrifice, offering still would have to be made today. But because Jesus offered one sacrifice for sins forever, it made us perfect. Now anybody, everybody has access to God's throne. We can come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and grace to help 24-7. But some people act like Jesus never went to the cross. Most Christians act like Jesus never went to the cross, and they're trying to go about their daily lives living in the natural, trying to make things happen in their lives and trying to fix things and solve things and find solutions for things as though Jesus never went to the cross, as though this never happened. While Jesus is sitting up there, chilling while you're working, and wondering why you working while he's, while he's chilling, and he wants you because he sees you seated together with him, with all things under your feet, while they're working. He wants to work. Why you rest? If you work, he rests. If you rest, though, he'll work. Jesus can work it out. Work it out. For then, would they have not ceased to be offered? If, if they could make those believers perfect, they would have ceased to be offered for the worshipers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. That, 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 that doesn't happen today. God doesn't remind you of your sins because Jesus' sacrifice made you perfect on the inside. Hallelujah. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Now, I said all that to you to, to, to say this. There's no more sacrifices. I got so excited about that. I got a deeper revelation. There's no more sacrifices. Because Jesus, he fixed it all. There's no more reminder of your sins. Your sins are done away with. If, your, if, if there was one sin that was not done away with, that was not eliminated, there would still have to be sacrifices. Jesus offered one sacrifice for sins for all time. One translation said, good for all time. That remains, I mean, our sins have been removed. So you should just, when the devil 
comes to you with an accusing voice about something you did wrong, just laugh at it. Well, you didn't raise your kids right. And they were saying your kids wouldn't be like this today if you didn't do this and you didn't do that. You didn't raise, see, pastor teaching all this grace. And you, have been, you raised your kids under the law, so have I. But guess what? My kids are in the hands of God, and they're going to be fine because I trust God. And he's not condemning me. God's not condemning me for how I raised my kids. So don't beat yourself up because God is not beating you up. He's not punishing you for anything you've done. How can he? He doesn't remember what you did. Your sins have been canceled. See, more people are dealing with this than what's let out. Because I tell you, you know, I, uh, I come up under, when I got turned on to the Lord, shortly after the time I gave my life to the Lord, I came up under word of faith teaching, man, and it's changed my life. And, and uh, I know my heritage, I... I I love my heritage, but um, I don't like to make general statements, but let me just say something that, that it, it, in the word of faith culture, uh, there is some stuff that goes on uh, in a lot of the culture of word of faith. And there's like in that culture, in some of it, this, this, when I say the culture, it doesn't really apply to everybody, but. It's, it, it's, it's kind of an unspoken thing, okay? And there's like a dark secret, this unspoken thing, and you know what it is? If something goes wrong or something bad happens in your life, the question is, where did you miss it? And it causes you to look inside yourself. See, a lot of people in Word of Faith don't talk about this. And as a result, they're not open and honest about things they're dealing with. Because somebody might think they're not in, you know. So you, you, you hide stuff, and where the faith folks good at hiding stuff? Because they don't want to know, they don't want you to know the stuff they're dealing with because you might not think they're not walking in faith. And they think somebody will chop your head off. And, and if you get somebody like that, that you talk to, and uh, you say, hey, you know what, I'm dealing with some stuff at home. Well, well brother, don't, you know, you, you walk by faith, not by sight. There's a guy I went to school with. Actually, he went to Raymond before I did. He worked at the convenience store that I worked at, Get and Go. Anybody ever heard of Get and Go? Get and Go is in Tulsa. That's not around anymore. But I worked there, and there was a guy who I ran across who worked there who used to go to the school I went to, uh, to the Bible school I went to. And, uh, and back when he went to school, he went earlier. And you couldn't, you couldn't hardly go to school, he said, without, like, if you couldn't even say, if you asked somebody, how you doing this morning? Well, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only, not beneath. I walk by faith, not by sight. Praise God. I'm blessed and I'm not cursed. Thank you, Lord. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. I was like, I just asked how you doing this morning. I mean, everybody thought they had to say a scripture back. I remember somebody used to, used to come to Summit, and the uh, only thing I remember he'd say, he'd say something to me, he said, praise God, hallelujah, amen. Praise God, hallelujah, amen. Praise God, hallelujah, amen. Praise God. So anyway, why did I even tell that story? Okay, well, this guy, his name was Chuck. Worked at Get and Go. And so Chuck, <laughs> Chuck uh, had a roommate, and they had roaches. And we had roaches in them. When I went to Bible school, we had, I know those roaches, I I knew I knew the family. <laughs> Amen. But um, we kind of co cohabit. How do you call it? Cohab. We existed together. Cohabitation. 
Yeah. And they were, they, were, they were cool until you turned the lights on. I mean, you turn the lights off and you wouldn't see them. They scattered when they turned the lights on. Some of y'all don't know about roaches. Some of y'all, they look, some of you look at, they look at you today and you think, they think you've never been through nothing. You never, man, I, I can tell you some stories, man. I can tell you some stories. I, I can tell you that, that God will, will pull you through no matter what you're going through. You're looking at somebody, when I was uh, just start, started learning word of faith and uh, speaking the word and stuff, believe in God, and I come home from work, and I got fired, and um, eventually, I mean, I couldn't, I was behind on the rent. I came home and, um, over on 79th and Harcourt, Indianapolis, Indiana, and uh, I, I came home, not from work, wherever I was coming from, because I got fired. That's why I couldn't keep up for the rent. I was preaching to people when I should have been working, and that's why I got fired. I was learning faith, but I didn't have, have much wisdom then. And so I came home one day, and I was fired because it wasn't what the devil was coming against me, no, because I wasn't no good in my work. See, some people are like, man, the devil is coming against me. No, you didn't work. You're reading your Bible. They don't pay you to read your Bible. And preach to people. But I mean, the devil came against me. So y'all enjoying this this table discussion. <laughs> I came home from work and they had tied a rope around all my stuff. I didn't have much. It was all sitting in the front front yard. You imagine coming home and you get evicted and all your stuff is on the front and everybody looking. I was so into Jesus, I didn't really care what people look. I, mean, I didn't like it. I wasn't excited about that, but Hey, I got somebody to help me come take it up, and it was a good family. Uh, the Hayes family it was a blessing to me. Let me stay there, and then eventually I went to Bible school, and eventually I ran into this guy, Get It and Go, and he told me the story about the roaches. <laughs> so uh, he had a roommate. Now, he used to say, Chuck used to say when, he, when, the, when the roaches came out, I don't see those roaches. I don't see those, you know, we walk by faith, not by, I don't see those roaches. I don't, there was a lot of roaches. <laughs> he had more roaches than we did. I don't see those roaches. And finally the guy, his roommate got tired of, he, he was a Raymond student as well, but he's like, he got tired, he got tired of him saying that. One day when he said, I don't see those roaches, his roommate said, well, I see them and I'm getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So, I don't know. The Bible says, "Confess your faults one to another." Now, this is a, this is another story for another day. But let me just say this: you can be open and honest in a grace atmosphere, because what I want to create around here, I'm still Word of Faith, man, and I thank God for what I've learned in Word of Faith, but I want to create a culture of grace where people are not ashamed of what they're dealing with, and they can be open and honest, and you can confess your faults, not to God, you're already forgiven, but you can confess things that you're dealing with with one to another, and then pray for one another that you can be healed. Because in an, in, a, in an environment of grace, you can be open and honest about what you're dealing with, and nobody's going to chop your head off and talk about you're not in faith and you need to start speaking the word and all that kind of stuff. But they'll start to build you up and tell you who you are and point you to your identity. Hmm? And see, thank God I'm back to children. But see, when you're, when you're raising children, I can't stress this upon you enough. Point them to who you are. On the inside of you, you're just like Jesus. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. Don't tell them, well, if you keep doing that, you're going to end up. Don't just take that out of your vocabulary. You're going to end up. No. You're going to end up where you start. The righteousness of God in Christ. You're complete in him. You are, and 
It's like uh, Spock said to somebody, said to Kirk, any Trekkies out there, that he said, you are and you shall ever be my friend. That's how Jesus looks at you. That's how you are and that's how you're going to end up. <laughs> you are and you shall forever be loved. You shall ever be loved. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. And we, that's what he calls you. Oh, my goodness, man. I'm getting blessed up here. I'm supposed to be talking about the gifts of the Spirit. I thought it was going to be going one way, but here we go. Thank you, Lord. I trust you were blessed by the word. And as we move on in our experience, we would love to and invite you to participate during our tithes and offerings. If you choose to do so, please follow the promptings on the screen and know whatever amount you decide to give, we appreciate it very much. And we speak God's blessings over your life. Thanks again. Have an amazing week. And we hope to see you back here next time.